Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Virtual Cowboy. This is uh, the Virtual Cowboy Tech Roundup. My name is Mike Moran, and I'm the managing partner here. And today we are going to uh, show you how we hook up a uh, a power supply to the motherboard and what the other connections are for. So uh, basically, we're doing everything but installing it into the case and. Uh, like I said on uh, our, another power supply video, uh, there's four screws holding it into the case. Uh, sometimes you do have to move things out of the way uh, before you can get the power supply in the case. If you do have to move the board uh, and it does have to come out, do not try to force it. Uh, you will destroy something on the board. Uh, you may have to take the board completely out of the machine to get the power supply in. Some of the older machines, older cases. All right, so what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to use one of our AM2 boards, uh, which is a bench tester. And we are also, also going to describe the uses of the usefulness of keeping a board uh, out of its case on our bench and what it needs to fire up. Uh, the board needs several things. Uh, it needs power from the power supply, it needs a CPU, and it needs a memory, and video if it does not have onboard video for you to be able to see what it's doing. We have a KVM switch, uh, we're going to be doing this on, and uh, one USB cable replaces both the PS2 mouse and keyboard uh, function. Uh, both go through one cable. And that is the only thing different. Uh, you know, we could hook it up to an external mouse and keyboard, but we're going to use our KVM here, and uh, that's going to be shown on our 19-inch uh, Acer LCD, which uh, will give the camera a pretty clear picture of what we're looking at when we fire it up. Now, this board is a prob problematic board. Instead of sending it back, uh, we we do get use out of it because it does work sometimes. Uh, we have a single stick of RAM in here and that's what I recommend doing this with uh, to eliminate possibility of bad RAM and two possibilities. Uh, I'm going to show you what we got here and this can be done on, on the flat bench. I was just uh, griping because our net admin had it on the bench without uh, the box. The box has got foam in it so it's not damaged the bottom of the board and it's also got the uh, anti-static bag wrap around it. Okay, so we have nothing hooked up except for the fan to the motherboard. Where this connects, there's a couple other spots that will look very, very much identical. That connects to the one that says CPU fan. It nearly always says CPU fan. So what we do here when we install the power supply, you got to connect it. And there are a couple different cables here that may or may not go to the motherboard. And these are the ones for the motherboard. We have a four pin, and these are almost nearly always yellow and black. And this is a separate connector. And then we have a 24 pin. This 24 pin can convert to a 20 pin and if that is the case, here is your socket right here. Well, this one is a 24 pin, but if it did happen to be a 20 pin, then these other four you would not use. Do not try to force them into this jack over here. They will not go. They are not shaped the same, and that's where this one goes. So you're looking for two jacks on the board, and one of them's right there, and one of them's right here. This one, however, does take the 24. A little tough doing this with one hand. So now we made it back into the 24 pin clip, and it does go right on there, and push it all the way down until it snaps in. Same thing with this one. Okay, now that we have that done, we have everything the board needs to fire up. We won't even plug it in and we will fire it up. 
We will hook up on our video. We do have integrated video on this board. Hook up our USB. Hook up our Ethernet. And the Ethernet is not necessary. And we have a surge protector down here. And we're going to hook up our power supply. Now that we've got that done, this power supply does not have a switch. So therefore, it is on live right now. On the board, this would be your front panel header. And there's the power switch right there. We're going to jump those and the CPU fan fires up. We are on number four. We hit our KVM to number four. Unplug it. These other connectors are for your other peripherals. And one of them is going to go and make sure they do not short out on the board. Uh, they are recessed all the metal is recessed in the plastic to prevent that. We're going to hook it up one more time. Remember, always remove the power supply and it fired right up on us that time. We should have an Ubuntu disk in here. Yes, yes we do. Okay, so we get the same screen here. And it says hit F1 to continue. So we're down here on our keyboard. It's looked on the uh, hook to the KVM. Verifying DMI pull data. There's our disk. Try Ubuntu without any change to your computer. It allows us to test, test different memories. It allows us to, heck, we could do anything with the open computer like this. Uh, slave a hard drive up to it for a clone. Uh, force hard, drive, hard drives across our network uh, with the use of Linux. Uh, two Windows machines. We can read SATA with this board because it is a SATA board. Uh, we can test video cards, we can test any type of computer equipment with a board. Uh, the only thing that we can't determine what the problem is uh, out of two units, if we don't have a replacement unit to be able to test it with, would be the CPU and the motherboard. Uh, we can narrow it all the way down to them, those two items. Uh, lots of different desktop hard uh, motherboards and CPUs uh, to be able to eliminate which one is the problem. But when it comes to laptops, uh, it's a little harder to do. Uh, for there is about 500 different motherboards. Uh, there's got to be 100 different chargers and 100 different batteries. We are almost fired up. It is completely running off the CD. The progress bar is almost to the end, and this is what it looks like. And I have touched nothing other than what I have shown. One thing that we did forget to mention about the uh, power supplies, uh, and this is a critical part, would entail the fact that the video cards uh, sometimes use power. And if they do require power, uh, then it is imperative that they are plugged in or they will burn up very, very quickly. Uh, they take two different types of power connectors that I know of. The PCI Express takes a six pin from the power supply and some power supplies are not equipped with the six pin. Uh, other video cards take a regular Molex connector uh, whereas you have to have enough present to be able to plug it in. Uh, do not try to uh, run your machine without uh, the video card being powered. If it does accept one, uh, you will see a six pin clip uh, or a 4-pin Molex connector. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Virtual Cowboy Tech Roundup. My name is Mike Moran.